There is an ongoing debate about compensating the victims of failure to vaccinate. Should you be exempt from the consequences of your choice not to vaccinate yourself or your children? Well, let's look at it this way. Rhode Island gets pretty cold in the winter. Snow starts falling in November and pretty much doesn't disappear until March. One day, I choose not to shovel the snow from my sidewalk. If you walk past my house and fall, it's now my fault. I'm liable and have to pay. Why should failing to vaccinate your children or yourself be any different? The expenses incurred by a child's illness include time, money, and emotions. In fact, measles, a vaccine-preventable disease, often causes fatal complications in children too young to be vaccinated and can result in years of slow deterioration of your family's lives until the eventual death of your child. In that time, you'd experience mental anguish, emotional trauma, medical expenses, and lost work time. Nothing could compensate for the loss of your child, but compensation could help your family continue living and prevent additional financial suffering. But where would this compensation come from? Well, if your child, who's too young to be vaccinated, contracts measles from a deliberately unvaccinated child, wouldn't you want the parents who decided not to vaccinate their child to be held responsible? Of course, there should be a right not to vaccinate your child, and those who do exercise this right shouldn't be put in jail. However, it's arguable that choosing not to vaccinate is negligent. America's tort system holds people to a community standard, and if they deviate from that standard, compensates those harmed. Vaccine refusal fits perfectly into this definition of negligence because the medical and scientific communities have mostly agreed that the risks of vaccinating are significantly smaller than the risks of non-vaccinating. So, people who don't vaccinate are actually choosing the larger risk, making an unreasonable choice. When someone else is harmed because of this unreasonable choice, the conditions of tort liability apply. One more argument to justify tort liability is that this would help prevent create any more cases of harm caused by vaccine refusal. Studies have shown that unvaccinated children are at higher risk of contracting vaccine-preventable disease and that these children are thus more likely to transmit those diseases to others. Holding parents responsible and forcing them to pay when such harm is caused by their child will encourage parents to include those costs when deciding whether or not to vaccinate. A challenge of this entire proposal is that our legal system contains a no-duty-to-act rule where people don't have to pay for harms caused by their non-action. However, it's clear that the choice not to vaccinate is a conscious one where parents normally claim to have done extensive research and actively defend their decision against others. It would also be difficult to prove in court that the defendant caused the plaintiff's harm, so the ability to prove causation would also have a large impact on the ruling in a case-by-case -case basis. Opponents could also argue that children may be infected by vaccinated children. So what's the difference? Well, our tort system only imposes liability when an unreasonable choice is actively made and that choice causes harm. So the parents of a vaccinated child who infected another child would not have been purposefully negligent and thus not held liable, whereas a non-vaccinating parent in the same case might be deemed negligent. As in any debate, the arguments for both sides of this issue are many, but we hope that this video helps explain the case for legal responsibility in choosing not to vaccinate. Whether encouraged by the law or not though, it's best to just vaccinate yourself and your kids. It's the safer thing for both you and me.